Got a very special guest joining me here on the program, the man behind Drink HRW, uh, Alex Tarnava joining me here. Alex, how are you this morning? I'm good. Really good. It's uh, You're in Vancouver too. It's a gorgeous day. I am. Too bad we couldn't do this in person, but obviously with uh, with COVID-19 going on, uh, things are a little bit uh, restrictive. Uh, but thanks for taking the time, man. Uh, really excited to chat with you, like I said. Uh, let's start first with what uh, what it is Drink RW does. It's a hydrogen water-based uh, thing that you put in you know, water. But uh, for those who you know, kind of want a Coles Notes version of what it does, uh, why don't you explain to our audience here? Yeah. So basically, it's uh, if you want to think of like a, a sparkling water, like a carbonated water, the same kind of concept except it's hydrogen gas instead of co2 so it's not hydrogen peroxide it's not changing the compound of water or anything like that it's just adding a gas to water now the reason we're doing this is um, molecular hydrogen hydrogen gas has a lot of research behind it and it's building every year so there's uh, something like 100 clinical trials right now showing benefit 1500 publications showing benefit um it's it it's looking like Hydrogen gas actually works in our body very similar to exercise, right? To improve health outcomes, maximize things like exercise and performance, everything like that. But also things like our recovery, our metabolic health, our, our sleep, right? There's a lot of unique applications. And really interestingly, um, when you dissolve hydrogen gas in water, it appears to work better than when you inhale it, right? And the reason why we've stormed the market is uh, we spent a few years and, you know, like thousands of formula adjustments. So we, we have this tablet that gets 10 to 100 times higher concentrations of hydrogen in the water than any expensive machine or prepackaged water. Um, we're the only, only company in North America that, that's gone and got legal status. So we're one of only about 4% of supplements in the U.S. with new dietary ingredients. Um, status with the FDA, right? So we're a fully legal supplement. Um, we're the only hydrogen water company that has informed sports certification. So we're safe to use for professional athletes and, you know, amateur athletes. And uh, we're the most heavily clinically validated um, hydrogen product on the market as well. So in just four years on the market, we have seven clinical trials published, two case studies, a preclinical trial, we have 16 or 17 more clinical trials underway, four more preclinical research programs underway. We're working with, I think it's 13 universities across the world. So we're really backing up our product. We're not just a bunch of marketing claims. We're, we're working with all these institutions and letting them do the research and, and publish the findings. So it's not us hiring a private firm. These are public universities that are using their own government grant dollars to to research what we're doing that's fantastic and obviously reputation is important when it comes to having a product and you know having something that's not you know internal and something that you know anyone can sort of get access to i think is awesome and that's you know kudos to you guys for you know going and, and doing all those steps because i think it's really important especially when people are taking things you know that are going to benefit their health but what you were telling me off air was interesting was sort of how you got into this how you started doing this and came up with this idea was because of a lot of injuries you've had in the past correct what was sort of the, what, what led you to this point yeah i mean i I'm pretty broken right now. Um, like I was saying, I've got arthritis in 11 spots. I, I no longer have any cartilage in, in my left shoulder. So it's actually like square, right? You know, um, I'm playing it year by year. I really, uh, I'd be like the youngest candidate for a full shoulder replacement, right? But myself and my surgeon doesn't want to do that. So each year we're just doing more imaging to see how bad it's gotten, see if I do a partial, see if I wait for experimental treatments, you know, because I'd be willing to pay and fly overseas to do something else to stave off like a, a full shoulder replacement. There's no coming back from that. You're never training or doing anything again. Um, so yeah, no, I, I got uh, I got really sick. Um, I want to say it's five and a half years ago. Don't know why I was training a lot back then. Um, I was training uh, martial arts, you know, kickboxing, boxing, um, jujitsu, but also I was competing in CrossFit. And all of a sudden, um, I had like central nervous system shutdown. I had sudden onset narcolepsy, right? My, infl my inflammation levels were, you know, 70 times higher what a normal person should be. Like it, it was really wild. And after a few weeks of figuring out what was going on, right? So I went from like, um, a guy that I, I had a, you know, 54 inch plyometric jump and I couldn't jump an inch off the ground. 
Really? Right? Okay. Uh, but I had normal strength. My my deadlift, my squat, my bench press were all normal. But I went from being able to string together like 20 bar muscle ups to not being able to do a chest bar. Right. So I just had no reactive, you know, strength whatsoever. Um, they couldn't figure out what it was. It was some sort of mystery virus. You know, uh, my roommate at the time, he got really sick too. He got pneumonia and he was a guy who was like top tenning and, you know, obstacle course races and triathlons and stuff like that. And he missed a few weeks with pneumonia. But when the dust settled from that, um, arthritis was just like wildfire through, through my body. My joints were, you know, really falling apart. Um, got a couple cortisone injections, tried to keep training. I was on like a thousand milligrams of naproxen a day that actually caused ulcers in my stomach. And I was just scouring PubMed for anything that, that, um, looked like it could help with inflammation, arthritis. Um, I found uh, hydrogen water, um, you know, long story short, there was actually, you know, one study in rats that showed it stopped progression of osteoarthritis. I don't think it worked for me, but it, it piqued my interest enough that, you know, I, I started trying it. There was nothing good on the market. There was nothing that was getting like the levels of hydrogen that all the clinical research and preclinical research like conversions were needing. So I just started experimenting in my own kitchen, found my partner. He, he's local here in Vancouver too. He's a PhD chemist from the pharmaceutical industry. And we just started going back and forth you know, trying to figure this thing out, um, took us over a year and 2000 iterative adjustments to get our first like production ready, you know, prototype done. Um, but in that time, uh, it probably didn't stop my arthritis from advancing, but it completely loosened my shoulder. Right. Mm -hmm. So I could put on a jacket, I could put on like a shirt, you know, I could start doing some light training, you know, and, uh, um, then we just kind of really went down, down the road. Um, of commercialization, going through all the legal hoops, setting up clinical research programs. At the start, it was really um, anti-aging doctors that were our biggest market. They were super receptive. Um, I had originally developed it for athletes. Actually, um, five years ago, one of my first hand-pressed prototypes, I know you just had her on the air. Um, she was one of the first five people to take my hand-pressed prototypes that I made in the kitchen was uh, Lupita. Godinas. Oh, crazy. Okay. Because she had injured her shoulder before she even started MMA when she was just competing in jujitsu. Um, so I, I had uh, athletes in mind for a long time, but then we started going into more like metabolic conditions, anti-aging doctors, all this stuff. Um, and it just uh, kind of was, was pure luck. We, we ended up getting approached by some people with connections with the NHL um, started sending to a lot of players. We went through the informed sport and I just thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? Day one, I thought mixed martial artists were going to be the athlete group that will benefit from this the most. So I just started, you know, reaching out to some of my contacts and people just started text, texting each other. I mean, you, you know, fighters, they always have an injury. They're traveling. They, they don't sleep well. You know, some of them are partying too much, even on top of all of that. They just have so much stress and damage. And the reception was just, uh, you know, crazy. So, I mean, it's only been a year since I started texting, you know, a couple fighters and then they started texting each other. And I think we officially work with like 40 UFC fighters and supply product to three, 400 others. So, yeah, a lot of people, I, even like you, Laura Sanko, who I interviewed a couple weeks ago, I know she uses it. She loves it. Like, it's crazy to just see how much uh, this is being used by the MMA community. Um, how th did you find it was a progression in terms of like, you know, once one fighter started taking it, then it sort of caught like wildfire or was it a, a progression in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of the fighters using it? Because 40s, pretty big. I know the UFC has a lot of, uh, you know, obviously athletes, but still 40s, a pretty big chunk. I I'd say it, it's, it's picking up momentum, kind of like, you know, like an avalanche going down, right? Like, at, at the start, a couple people would use it. They text friends. We get a couple more, and it was exciting, right? Because we were getting some organically. But mm -hmm. then, as we added more and more, and started adding, you know, um, some bigger name stars as well that started approaching us, um, we've gotten more and more and more, you know, athletes approaching us. You know, to the point that uh, we're having to, you know, be not interested in a lot of deals, right? And we've had to really redefine how we're doing deals with a lot of athletes to look at it because um at the end of the day we we want to we're really about the fight for truth right so 
Um, we always want athletes to be taking the product for an extended period of time before we talk deals. And now that we have so much exposure from a lot of athletes, we're getting a lot of messages from management agencies and athletes just giving us rates for posts. You know, and that's not something we're interested in. You know, we have to tell them, hey, like, you know, like you need to like try the product and give us, you know, feedback and we have to believe them. And now it, it's, it's actually getting harder because are they just copying what they saw another fighter wrote, not even trying the product because they want money or do they actually enjoy it? So at the start, all the original athletes we worked with, when we were just sending them out packages, they were taking it, they were posting for free and then we we're working out deals after the fact. We have a lot of faith in, in how it worked with all those athletes. But now we've had to really start auditing all the opportunities, you know, because we, we again, we, we really believe in the science behind our product and how it's helping people. We just want to make sure the athlete is actually using it. Right. Yeah. And, right. and it's authentic, right? Like you said, you don't want people copying other, the other testimonial compared to someone yeah. else, right? It's got to be something that's sort of their own, uh, their own personal experience. Uh, one thing I do have to bring up, obviously, is because, uh, you know, obviously when it comes to taking anything as an athlete, uh, the big question is always USADA. Obviously, this isn't a performance enhancer, but is that something that you've had to sort of navigate through as well? Just because I know a lot of athletes are paranoid about what they're putting in their body. Yeah. So that, that's what I was mentioning. We're informed sport certified. So yeah. they're one of the certifying bodies that USADA approves. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's completely safe for UFC fighters, for NHL, NFL, Olympic athletes, right? So you know, okay, cool. it's tested for banned substances. And absolutely, that was one of the things. And, and I found it uh, kind of interesting um, that uh, athletes know really well about supplements, that they should be looking for in forms, form sports and supplements. But I've been finding with a lot of these athletes, they don't realize their CBD products that they're ingesting also should be tested for these things too because they aren't thinking of cbd as a supplement but they're made in the same contract manufacturers that make supplements and they're potentially contaminated so good point it, it is a really uh really big and important issue with people i mean um wasn't it like nate diaz like he, he ended up fighting masvidal but it was his own brand of organic multivitamins that you know, contained a SARM. Right. Know, right. Yeah. And there's no way he would have known that, you know, like I've toured over a hundred contract manufacturers. They run your product one day, they run another the next day. And that's why you have to really, really um, be careful. Um, and, and even with the audits, like going through NSF audits, informed sport audits, you know, shady manufacturers could be lying. They could be running something off the books at night, you know, that could get on the equipment. They don't clean it properly because these tests detect such trace levels, right? That it could have given an athlete no performance enhancement, but now it's ruined their career, yeah. right? No, so it's so much point. with manufacturing that we're really careful about. Um, you know, we, we have a manufacturing partner who, who's just not just informed sports certified, but NSF sport certified as well. Um, we work with informed sport because we find they're a lot more reasonable to deal with. They're a lot better customer experience. They test for all the same criteria as well. Um, but yeah, like th these things are, are, are issues that athletes really, they, they shouldn't have to worry about, but they do, right? right. It affects yeah. their, their career. No, it's a great point. Definitely wanted to touch on that just because obviously it's something that everyone really talks about. Now, if there's sort of like an average person, you know, watching this, you know, you know, they go to the gym, they might do some running, they might do some weightlifting. When do you recommend taking it? Do you recommend taking it before they work out or after? I know it's sort of, you know, preferential in terms of uh, in, in, in sort of a individual preference, but uh, what, what would you recommend to sort of an average person? If they're looking for performance enhancement at that workout, yeah. I, I recommend about 10 minutes before. Okay, I nice. Take it right before. But um, for the protective effects, the reparative work, everything like that, they take it an hour before, or if they take it right after, it's still going to help you recover in the same way. Um, but if you're looking for a boost of energy, like one of our clinical trials, uh, we raised alertness following sleep depth equivalent to caffeine, right? Oh, okay, and, interesting. You know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of people talk about it, fighters, other athletes, regular people, is um, when you drink your hydrogen water, say you're really tired, really run down, it wakes you up, but not like a high feeling, like drinking like a big cup of coffee. It's just like the absence of tired, you know, and we saw this in the clinical trial, it altered a completely different aspect of intention 
than caffeine does, right? So it just kind of made you feel okay, right? Didn't make you feel like full of energy, jittered, wired. You're just not tired. I, I agree. And I, I can attest to this. I've taken it. Uh, it's been great. Um, I've been taking it over so, you know, sort of the last month. I actually had some this morning uh, after my run. So it's been, uh, it's been good. Uh, one, one question I do have, I love the raspberry flavor. Are you coming out with any other flavors at all? Or is it just uh, with raspberry? Because it is good. I'll have, yeah. I, I can take raspberry all day. It's fantastic. We, we have a, a new product coming out that, that's not just hydrogen, but it, it's two other really important ingredients. Um, I'll, I'll give a hint. It's called Boost. And it's designed exactly for that purpose to give a huge boost when you're feeling run down or when you want the best workout of, of your life. So it's a really high end, you know, uh, product that's coming out in, in Q1 and it's strawberry kiwi. Oh, awesome. Right? I like that. So flavor. That sounds it's, good. It's going to be like um, a combo. You put a, a stick pack of powder and a tap and a tablet in the glass and then you drink it down as a strawberry kiwi. It tastes pretty good. That's very cool. No, I'm uh, lo looking forward to it. Alex, this was awesome. I really appreciate the time. Glad to get some information out there to a lot of people who I'm sure are wondering about this product. So I thought that was fantastic. Uh, anything you want to plug? Any uh, things you got coming up at all? Any social media? I'll give you the last word here, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, look out for uh, Boost and Bill. So again, we're, we're following down like the, the road of, of science with value. We designed products that really other uh, companies would never put out because they're too premium, you know, why, why get half the margins to put out a super premium product when you can sell everything separately and make two, three times as much. So we're coming out with um, our true performance line, boost and build are the first two products. Um, you'll probably see some athletes plugging that. And for anyone in uh, Vancouver, um, he's just starting out. He's working with, uh, you know, some of the UFC guys too. He's really reinvigorated my own personal love of martial arts check out joey foy sapperton scrapper um he's retaught me to strike as a southpaw because i can't can barely throw a punch with my left arm <laughs>